Zizhwav Bekshinsky was born on the 24th of February 1929 in the humble town of Sonuk, Poland. He grew up during the height of World War II. Uh, yeah, you, may, you may not have heard about it. It was, uh, well, it was not fun. Anyways, he ended up studying architecture at the University of Krakow and planned to be a construction supervisor. He finally finished up his studies at the ripe old age of 26 and finally got his construction job. As you'd probably expect, it sucked. He felt he was too pressured and got bored of, quote, the countless details. He hated it so much, in fact, that he decided to become a sculptor and photographer, despite the fact he had literally zero experience in the field. However, his photography actually went somewhere. And I'm glad for that, because these these sculptures, uh... Let's just say they're, they're, they're very interesting. His surreal style of photography would make him wildly popular, as the main style of photography at the time was known as straight photography, or pure photography. The point here was to capture the image exactly as it was, and to create as sharp an image as was technically possible at the time. Bekshinsky's style of photography went against this completely. When Bekshinsky unveiled his sadist's corset, many criticized it for its outlandish nature. Art critic Alfred Lagoki said, referring to this photo, Surrealist photography should not be acknowledged because of its direct interference with the photographed subject on the part of the photographer. He said it didn't capture the subject as it really was, and that Bekshinsky's work was, quote, anti-photography. Bekshinsky replied to this comment in a local newspaper that the pervasive style of pure photography didn't allow for artistic expression. The medium should grant that to the artist to make an artistic statement, if the artist wants to do that. You can see this mentality in all of his photos. The subject is often obscured or framed strangely, blurred, cropped, in silhouette, out of focus, or in shadow. He quit his career in photography in the 60s, donating all of his photos to the Historical Museum in Sanuk. His experience in the medium would go on to inspire his later paintings, the main focus of his work. At this point, he entered a new era of his work, the Fantastic series. It is apparent in the themes of Bekshinsky's work how the horrors he witnessed growing up as a Jewish child in World War II influenced his work. Themes such as architecture, religion, war, dream logic, and body horror fill the art. They take place in a variety of strange hellscapes with warped environments and people. Buildings engulfed in flames, colossal structures decaying. His work is filled with destruction and chaos. Common images in his work are French Gothic architecture, religious symbols, war helmets, warped faces, strange and unfamiliar landscapes, and particularly the human body. Although it often appears scrawny and mangled, likely similar to how it appeared to him during the war. Ultimately, his work looks to me like nightmares, realized. Bekshinsky's work is so complex and detailed, to find meaning in all of his work as a whole has been proven difficult for me. There are quite obviously themes between them, but the message I thought he was trying to send was unclear. Thankfully, though, this was rather intentional, and to try to find meaning in something made by someone who doesn't want you to is meaningless. The reason I chose Bekshinsky was not only because his hellish art fascinated me, but because of his feelings about art as a whole. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that every painting you've seen thus far has no name. They have not been given titles, as Bekshinsky intended. He thought that giving an artwork a title gave a preconceived notion about how the viewer should feel when the art should be able to stand by itself. Not as writing, not as some deeper meaning, not as some philosophy, but as art. The following quote from Bekshinsky in 1981 defines what he meant perfectly. Meaning is meaningless to me. I do not care for symbolism, and I paint what I paint without meditating on a story. I hope, in creating my own art, to have the same mentality about it. I want to create artwork not with a writing or a story in mind, but as artwork. It's kind of a hot take, but I believe that, as a visual medium, it should play to its strengths. It can make a statement, and it can have meaning, but that should come from the individual. Some artists with a similar style are H.G. Geiger, Darius Zawadzki, and Tetsuya Ishida. They all have a similar surreal art style, and also have similar ways of manipulating the norm. Geiger focuses more on a sci-fi, primordial feel with strange biomechanical designs. He was the one who inspired the design of the xenomorph from Ridley Scott's Alien. Zawadzki's art is most similar, but with a focus on dystopian and apocalypse ideas. While Bekshinsky's work was more abstract, Zawadzki has a very strong war focus, with helmets and gas masks being extremely common. Ishida focuses on a surreal portrayal of contemporary Japanese life, with a recurring character in his art being different versions of himself. On the 21st of February 2005, Bekshinsky was found dead in his flat, with 17 stab wounds on his body, following a dispute with loaned money 
amounting to only $100. He left behind a great legacy and has a museum dedicated to him in his hometown of Senek. At Burning Man that year, a giant red Bekshinsky cross, frequently seen in his work, was erected in his honor.